the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. My tip for you today has to do with teaching resources and opportunities available from Title VI National Resource Centers. Give me a moment, let me share my screen. So you may be asking yourself, what are Title VI National Resource Centers? You are language teachers. You care about international education. That is what we are all there for. So here are the basics. Uh, we are university-based centers focused on research teaching and public engagement about international world regions and related languages. For example, we are a Latin American language and area studies center. So our language focuses, foci, are Spanish, Portuguese, uh, indigenous language of the Americas, Haitian Creole. There are currently 96 centers as of 2020 in the United States. You can see the different world regions listed here. We're all over the United States. The funding is provided by the U.S. Department of Education. These are the kind of opportunities, services, and resources that I'm talking about. Teacher workshops and institutes being uh, perhaps the focal point for many of us. Here's a center like the University of Maine, it's Canadian Studies Center. You can see that they're focused on resources and professional development. Why should you find this interesting? Well, all Title VI National Resource Centers provide professional development, both for K-12 and post-secondary, um, and many programs are specifically oriented toward world language teachers or because you are always looking for culturally authentic content, um, you will find many thematic offerings that might be of use. We're all expected to show local and national impact. So that means that you don't have to just find a center close to you. Um, we are all avail available for your needs. Most of our offerings are free or at minimal cost. Um, I will tell you that in our case, we will have teachers from throughout the US participate in our institutes, even the face-to-face -face ones. We have often given travel grants. If you see a program from a center that looks interesting, ask them if they can help support your travel. And of course, while we're offering more virtual opportunities, that just opens up more possibilities for you. So here are a couple of links if you want to explore the centers that are out there. Um, if you're a French teacher, say you may be interested in looking at centers for Western Europe, for Africa, for Canada. Um, there is one particular center at Berkeley that lists um, summer teacher programs from all centers, no matter the world region. Just some examples. Uh, selfishly, I start with my own center, Summer Institute that we did. Um, this is one example of the many kind of interesting and unique collaborations that we pursue. This one was with the Pulitzer Center. We Speaking of programming specifically for language teachers, we just did a, a workshop this past weekend with ACTFL focused on tools and strategies for teaching language online. Um, we are doing a lot of virtual. When we do face-to-face, -face, it's just so re rich to have the range of participants we have. Another example from Vanderbilt Latin American Studies from my colleagues here at UWM in international education. Um, they've been doing a lot of work both for teachers and for students on local global connections and on social justice. And as I mentioned, you can tap any center nationally, but those of you in the DC area, you have three Title VI centers nearby at Howard, at George Washington, and Georgetown. One of my favorite resources that we've built up, it's certainly been a, a personal uh, love of mine, is children's literature and children's literature that uh, presents uh, cultural sensitive uh, work. 
for use in the classroom. A number of area studies have also developed awards. Um, in the case of the Americas Award, which is what I've worked with, you will see that there are books recognized that are bilingual editions, that are simultaneous Spanish editions, all of which might be uh, useful in your, in your teaching. You can bring presenters into your classroom these days virtually. Here's an example from George Washington, a Skype a scholar. Many centers have lending media collections. Even if you don't need the physical copies, they can point you towards streaming work on topics you're interested in, as in uh, the work of Indiana's Russian East European Center. Many of us include classroom resources on our website. Here's an example from European Center at Illinois. Another example from Cornell's Southeast Asia program and from Canadian studies. When travel is an option, look for travel for educators programs. There's nothing like a program specifically designed for educators. It's your peers that you're traveling with. Here's an example from Tulane, which has run, I think, five years worth of the Teaching Cuba program. Many of us um, work with outreach consul consuls nationally that will help aggregate, aggregate the kinds of opportunities, opportunities we offer. For example, the Consortium of Latin American Studies programs puts out a summer list of the Latin American summer institutes and workshops. So you might like to start here before you go exploring individual programs. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Title VI Language Resource Centers. I've been talking about the National Resource Centers, which include area studies, but there is also this program. Fewer centers, I think usually less than 10 across the country. Each LRC has a different kind of uh, again, specialization focus, many of them work with materials production, less commonly taught languages, assessment research, but you should be aware of those as well. So that's what I have. Here's my contact information. And I've enjoyed doing this. Thanks very much and be in touch if you'd like. Thanks.